in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, one true God, forever and ever. Amen. For the purpose of this meditation, I'd like to take the Gospel according to St. Luke chapter 2, verses 27 to 40. It talks about the temple entry of Jesus along with Joseph and Mary. We also see the introduction of Simeon and Anna, two very righteous religious people, Anna being a prophetess, um, both of them coming at the moment when the entry of Jesus into the temple is being talked about. And as we um, think of that image in our mind, both of these two very encouraging, nice, old and yet very hopeful people come into the picture. Jesus, as we know, was taken uh, to the temple to fulfill what needs to be done when children are born. And uh, he is very uh, sincerely and faithfully taken to the temple by Joseph and Mary to fulfill that. For the purpose of our meditation, I'd like to talk about a specific thing. And I term my meditation as rites of passage to ease of passage. I'd like to qualify and define rites of passage in a certain way because rites of passage are also used to talk about the entry into a cult or a group. That's not what I intend. By rites of passage, I intend to talk about the transformation we undergo, the entry we have into a community which changes the erstwhile status that we had and brings us into an other status altogether. This is what I am talking about. So the essence of my sermon is to see how rites of passage and such rites of passage should be converted into an ease of passage in our churches. The first rite of passage, which I suggest and also would like to thus say that we should convert into an ease of passage is the baptism of a child. In early days, for a baptism, the entire church community would stay on in church and attend that baptism whether they were called and invited for the baptism or not. Now, what it suggested was the importance of baptism in itself. Not only the prayers being said, the holy oil being used, but more than that, the entry of a child into a community and into a belief of the Trinity and of Christ Jesus himself. Now, such an occasion could not be done without help, without the accompaniment of the community. And therefore we see uh, baptisms in earlier days with the whole community, the whole church attending. That's not the case uh, anymore. Now, what I would uh, like to uh, say in regard to uh, how Simeon and Anna play a role into the temple entry of Jesus is to say how important it is for such rites of passage, for such sacraments when they happen in church, to happen in the form of a community with the accompaniment of the community and with a welcome and hospitality offered by members of the community. The other day, um, a colleague and a friend of mine a priest who is in a nearby church conducted the baptism of uh, two children and the members belong to our church but because of some work going on in our church the baptism had to be conducted there and uh, Father Reggie uh, was uh, uh, very kind enough 
to accept uh, to do these sacraments. And uh, when the grandfather of the children came back to me and I asked, uh, so how did everything go? And one of the things that he said was, the priest was very welcoming. The priest was very hospitable. The priest was very kind. The priest was very compassionate. And therefore he made the father and the mother of the children at ease, comfortable, happy, and uh, there was not a trouble during the entire baptism. Whenever the children uh, had or they, they seemed to be in some kind of disturbance, uh, he always made it a point to assure the parents that it's okay and that we could stop for a little time, make them at ease, comfortable, and then continue the service. In uh, verse 28 of Luke chapter 2, we look at how Simeon is thrilled to take the child Jesus in his arms and he praises God. Simeon is thrilled to take the child Jesus in his arms and he praises God. Now, perhaps this is what the priest here also did during the baptism. And this is what we are also called to do, that we praise God for this child who has come for an initiation into the church. And therefore, it's not just a rite of passage. It's an ease of passage, not just for the child, but for the parents of the child as well. The second rite of passage I'd like to talk about is the Sunday school. And among ourselves, we always uh, share points and we say, especially for churches outside Kerala, that if you have a good Sunday school, uh, you are assured of a well-attended church because a lot of young parents are looking for a good Sunday school to make their children attend, to bring their children to. So the Sunday school has a big role to play and so do the teachers in the Sunday school. They are the second parents of the children that we have. And uh, as they teach, as they inspire, as they instill values to the children, so they must also make sure that they offer a wonderful experience for a child who's coming to a Sunday school. So Sunday school can be the best or the worst experience of a child, depending on how we relate with the child and how we deal with the child. Here again, we have to have an ease of passage instead of just a rite of passage. In verse 38, we see Anna speaks of the child to everyone who was looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. There is a certain kind of encouragement. There is a certain boost being given here. And as we look at uh, our Sunday schools, we should question ourselves as to how we teach our children and how we uh, try and put forward a credible way of grading children. Now, what about children with special needs? What about differently able children? What about children uh, who have another uh, condition which perhaps makes it a diff little difficult for them to follow the usual Sunday school. So when we go by the, the ordinary and usual uh, exams that we have and the grading that we have and finally prices are given away, what about children who can't compete in this kind of an environment and are perhaps gifted in several ways, but the problem is that we do not uh, bring together and uh, we do not bring close the gifts that they share and therefore these cannot be graded and uh, because of that uh, prices aren't given uh, to them. So we need to therefore change this rite of passage that we have of having uh, children go through the Sunday school into an ease of passage to say that uh, however a child is gifted, special, different. We need to make sure that that child is also brought close to us as teachers, as educators, as uh, spiritual leaders, 
so that they also then feel the ease of passage. Finally, the third rite of passage is marriage. A couple who have a lot of dreams come together one fine day to get married in church. I always insist uh, and tell other priests also that it's very, very important to have a sermon preached for a wedding because that sermon not only talks to the couple but also talks to those who have come for the wedding. Here again, a marriage is not just a rite of passage. It should be an ease of passage where we bring the couple and make them comfortable. In verse 29, Simeon says, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word. There should be a hope which is felt by the priests and also by those who are attending a marriage so that that hope and that peace is then given to the couple. We should not be bitter with ourselves. We should not be angry with things. We should not make untoward rude jokes about marriage. We should not basically say that, ah, okay, this guy is also getting married. And so welcome to the club. He's also now going to suffer all these rude male dominated jokes, obviously made by a majority of male priests. This is not the need of the hour, but rather we need to make the couple at ease, happy, peaceful, hopeful, so that it's not just going to be a rite of passage, but it's going to be an ease of passage. Dear friends, Let's also think about church like this. How did Simeon and Anna make the temple entry of Jesus as good, as comfortable, as happy as possible, not only for the child, but also for the parents and for those who accompanied them so that they felt so good about this passage into the temple that they had. Similarly, are we then capable of transforming these rites of passages that we have, rites of passage that we have into an ease of passage, starting with baptism, going on through Sunday school, and then going on to the marriage of a couple. There are also other rites but I think it's okay and enough to talk about these three important rites. The Sunday school is, is not a sacrament as such, but it's also a rite of passage of a child into a church. So let's talk about this. Let's feel about this. The next time you go to church, make someone else feel comfortable, at ease. Be hospitable to someone. Be loving to someone. Be caring to someone. The big churches... When people attend big churches, all this is pre-COVID. Uh, always the complaint is that when we go to a church and we are new, no one comes and talks to us. That should change. The moment we see people, and I'm not talking about COVID, but at other times. And if you can't meet a person in, you can't meet someone in person and talk to them, find other ways to do that. Be hospitable, be loving, so that the rite of passage is finally changed to an ease of passage. May God bless us all. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.